You bought a property, you sold it a few years later. You wanna figure out what's my annualized return on that investment. Today, we're gonna to hit the whiteboard and get into that calculation. Hey everybody, my name is Jesse Fergali. Thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, hit that subscribe button and leave comments in the comments if you have any questions or you'd like me to do specific videos. Okay, got the Bigger Pocket shirt on today because this video was inspired by some of the chats in the forum on Bigger Pockets talking about returns on investment, annualized returns, and trying to figure out what your real estate investment is actually producing. Now I've done other videos on different type of metrics I like to use. IRR to me is still the gold standard when it comes to modeling. That's the internal rate of return. I've done a video, I'll link up below. And the other one I really like when you're looking at a deal in year one is the cash on cash return. And that I also did a video and I'll put a link to that as well. But today we're talking about a return that you see on an investment that doesn't have multiple cash flows. So this could be your home that you've owned for a number of years, or it could be a development project where no cash flows really come out of the investment during the duration. It's really only at the time of sale or refinancing that you see a return. So without further ado, let's jump on the whiteboard and see one of the most common mistakes I see when you're trying to figure out an annualized return. Okay. Let's get into the weeds here. In this example, we're gonna do a property we bought and then sold five years later. So first of all, we purchased this property at $1 million. In year zero, as the finance types like to say, really just the beginning of year one. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's our timeline, poorly drawn timeline. Now to keep the numbers simple, I'm gonna do a sale price here at $2 million, okay? So pretty substantial sales price. Now what we know about return on investment formulas is you usually see something like this. Ending value minus the beginning value over the beginning value. Pretty standard to figure out a return on investment. Now, if we take what we have here, we have two minus one over one, okay? Simple enough. Pretty obvious that becomes one. One over one is one. One times 100 to make it a percentage is 100%. Okay, so we know that the return on investment for this asset is 100%. Now keep in mind, this is not a cash on cash return. It's not a return on equity. We're just doing a general return on investment. What I see people do so often is they figure out that Okay, it's 100% return, they got that part. But then what they do is they divide it by the number of years that they've had the investment and they go, okay, beautiful, 20% annual return. Incorrect. That's not how we get an annual return because what we're not taking into account when we do this is the compounding nature of that return. And this is actually inflating the return. And the way we avoid that is we have to use what's called the compound annual growth rate formula. This is the formula that I think people should look at when they don't have multiple cash flows going in and out. They're not trying to do just a simple cash on cash return. They're trying to figure out what their annualized return is for a particular project and maybe comparing it with something else. So this formula is a little bit different. You have the ending value over the beginning value. Okay, that's pretty simple. And then it, there's a little bit of a wrinkle. They raise it to a funny exponent. And it's funny because it's a fraction. And what this fraction is doing, it's basically the secret sauce that's gonna figure out how we do a compound return. With the N here, that's an N, in case it wasn't obvious, probably wasn't. The N is denoting the time periods. In this case, we're doing years, so it's five. So let's put a five in there. Now, ending value, two million. Beginning value, one million. Okay, simple enough, two over one. Well, anything over one is just that number in the numerator or on top, so two over one is just two. Now, one over five, kind of confusing, do on a calculator, let's turn that to a decimal. One over five is 0.2, and then we can do the calculation. What you're gonna find here, actually approximately, what you're gonna find here is that when you do this calculation, you're gonna get a return of 14.8%. Big difference from 20% and 14.8%. Quite frankly, if somebody told me I was getting an investment and I thought I was getting 20% and it turned out to be 14.8, I'd be pretty pissed off. I mean, it's still an amazing return, but if that's what your anchor is and this is what you get, not so happy about that. So what did we learn here? 
In order to annualize returns properly, you have to use the Kager formula or the compound annual growth rate formula. Now, as I mentioned, if we had cash flows throughout this term, then I would suggest you use the IRR formula or the IRR method. And like I said before, I did a video on that. You can check that one out. But if you just want to look at your annualized return for an investment, say it's a stock you bought, you've owned for a number of years, or it's a piece of land that you bought and you've owned for a number of years, and you want to figure out what's my annual return on that investment, compound annual growth rate, that's the way to do it. Okay, thanks so much. That's it for me. If you have any questions, leave them below. Like I said before, subscribe if you're enjoying these videos and hit that little bell because that'll tell you when I upload videos. All right, that's it for me. We'll catch you in the next one.